This is long, so I apologize for that. I've never had to tell a story in enough detail to actually explain it all the way. But it is true, and it happened when I was about six years old. In a quiet room, if you press your hair against a pillow, you can hear your heartbeat. As a kid, the muffled rhythmic sound sounded like fluff footsteps on a carpeted floor. So as a kid, almost every night, just as I was about to drift off to sleep, I would hear these footsteps and I would be ripped back to consciousness terrified. For my entire childhood, I lived with my mother in a nice, fairly nice neighborhood in a transitional phase. People of lower economic means were at gradually moving in, and my mother and I were two of these people. We live in a kind of house you see transported in two pieces on the interstate. But my mom took good care of it. There were a lot of woods surrounding the neighborhood that I would play in and explore during the day. But at night, as things often do to a kid, they took a more sinister feeling. This coupled with the fact that, due to the nature of our house, there was a fairly large crawl space underneath. Filled, with, filled my mind with imaginary monsters and inescapable, inescapable scenarios, which would consume my thoughts when I had, was awoken by the footsteps. I told my mom about the footsteps, and she said that I was just imagining things. I persisted enough that she blasted my ear with water from a turkey baster once just to placate me, since I thought it would, that would help. Of course, it didn't, despite all the creepiness and footsteps. The only weird thing was that every now and then, I would wake up on the bottom bunk despite having gone to bed on the top. This wasn't really weird since I'd sometimes get up to pee or get something to drink and could remember just going back to sleep on the bottom bunk. This would happen once or twice a week, but waking up on the bottom bunk wasn't too terrifying, but one night... I didn't wake up on the bottom bunk. I had heard the footsteps, but was too far gone to be woken by them. And when I was woken, it wasn't from the sound of the footsteps or a nightmare, but because it was, I was cold. Really cold. When I opened my eyes, I saw stars. I was in the woods. I sat up me- immediately and tried to figure out what was going on. I thought I was dreaming, but that didn't seem right. Though neither did me be- being in the woods. There was a deflated pool f- float right next to me. One of those shaped like a shark. That only, added, that only added to surreal feeling. But after a while, it seemed like I was going nowhere. I was going to wake up because it wasn't asleep. I stood up to orient myself, but I didn't recognize these woods. I played in the woods by my house all the time, so I knew them really well. But if these weren't the same woods, then how could I get out? I took a step felt, and felt a shooting pain in my foot, which knocked me back to where I had just, where I'd just been laying. I had stepped on a thorn. By the light of the moon, I could see they were everywhere. I looked at my other foot, but it was fine. And as a matter of fact, so was the rest of me. I didn't have, a, I didn't have another scratch on me. I wasn't even that dirty. I cried for a little bit, and then stood back up. I didn't know which way to go, so I just picked direction. I resisted the urge to call out, since I wasn't sure I wanted to be found by who or what might be in the, out there. I walked for what seemed like hours. I tried to walk in a straight line, and tried to, co- tried to course correct when I had taken detours. But I was a kid, and I was afraid. There weren't any howls or screams, and only once I had I heard a noise that really scared me. It seemed like a baby crying. I think now that it was just a cat, but I panicked. I ran in veering in different directions to avoid being the big thick bushes and collapsed trees. And I was I was paying close attention to where I stepped because by that point my feet were pretty bad in pretty bad shape. I paid too much attention to where I was stepping and not enough attention to where my steps were leading because not after but not because not long after hearing the cry I saw something that filled my filled me with a kind of despair I had never experienced it was the pool float I was only 10 feet from where I had awoken this wasn't magic or something supernatural or space bending 
I was lost. Up until that moment, I thought more about getting out of the woods than how I got in. But being back at the beginning caused my mind to swim. I wasn't even sure that these were my woods. I had only been hoping they were. Had I run in a huge circle around the, around that spot, or did I just get turned around and start making my way back? How was I going to get out? At the time, I thought North I thought the North Star was just the biggest star and the biggest and brightest star. And so I looked and found the brightest star and followed it. Eventually, things started to look more, more familiar. When I saw the ditch, a dirt ditch my friends and I would have dirt clot wards in, I knew I had made my way out. By that point, I was walking really slowly because my feet hurt so much. But I was so happy to be, be so close to home that I broke out into a light jog. When I actually saw the roof of my house over a neighboring lower set house, I let out a sob and ran faster. I just watched my I just wanted to be home. I had already decided that I wouldn't say that I wouldn't say anything because I had no idea what I could possibly say. I would get back to the house somehow, clean up and get in bed. My heart sunk as I rounded the corner and my and I could see my house came fully into view. Every light in the house was on. I knew my mom was up, and I knew I would have to explain or try to explain where I had been, and I couldn't even figure out where to start. My run became a jog, which became a walk. I saw her silhouette through the blinds, and although I was worried about how to explain things to her, that it, that didn't matter to me at this point. I walked up the couple steps to the porch and put my hand on the doorknob and turned. Right before I pushed it open, two arms wrapped around me and pulled me back. back. I screamed as loud as I could, Mom, help me! Please, Mom! The feeling, the feeling of being so close to being safe and then being physically pulled away from it filled me with a kind of dread that is, even after all these years, indescribable. The door I had been torn away from opened, and a flash of hope shot through shot through my heart, but it wasn't my mom. It was a man, and he was enormous. I thrashed and kicked at the shins of the person holding me, while also trying to get away from the person who had just come out of the come out of the house. I was scared, but I was furious. Let me go. Where is she? Where's my mom? What did you do to her? As my throat stung from screaming, and I was drawing to another breath, I became aware of a sound that had been that had been present longer than I than longer than I had perceived it. Honey, please calm down. I've got you. It sounded like my mom. The arms loosened and set me down. And as as the man approached, I noticed his clothes. He was a cop. I turned to face the voice behind me. I saw that saw that it really was my mom. Everything was okay. I began to cry, and the three of us went inside. I'm so glad you're home, sweetie. I worried I'd never, I never see you again. By that point, she was crying too. I'm sorry. I didn't know what happened. I just wanted to come home. I'm sorry. It's okay. Just don't ever do that again. I'm not sure me or my shins could take it. A little laughter broke through the sobs, and I smiled a bit. Well, I'm sorry for kicking you, but why'd you have to grab me like that? I was just afraid you'd run away again. I was confused. What do you mean? We found the snow on your pillow, she said, and pointed to a piece of paper that the police officer was sliding across the table. I picked up the note and read it. It was a running away letter. It said that I was unhappy and I'd never want to see her or any of my friends again. The police officer exchanged a few words with me and my mom on the porch and while well, I stared at the letter. I didn't remember writing a letter. I didn't remember anything about any of this. But even if I sometimes went to the bathroom at night, I didn't remember. Or even if I could even if I could have gone into the woods on my own. Even if all that even if all that could have been true, but the only thing I knew at that point was 
This isn't how you spell my name. I didn't write this letter.